Okay, guys. So let's uh, have a look at these here. So our first one is a work energy theorem question. How can I tell that number one is a work energy theorem question as opposed to a law of conservation of energy question? Malcolm? Right. As soon as it asks, as soon as you see the word work, you know it's a work energy theorem. A law of conservation of energy question would never ask you about work. All right. Uh, the second way is you can tell that the energy in this one is in fact changing. All right. There's no two points, I mean there's two points being compared, but we know that the energy at those two points is not the same because it specifically says a force is being used to do something here. Right? In any law of conservation of energy question we've done, we've never seen the word force. Force is never part of a law of conservation of energy question because a force would imply work is getting done. And we know that that's not the case. Energy is not changing. Mechanical energy is not changing in a law of conservation of energy question. All right, so we got to understand for this one works a change in energy. And in this case, the kinetic energy is changing because the speed is increasing from 3 meters per second to 9 meters per second. All right, so what I have to do then is find out how much energy it has at 3 meters per second and how much energy it has at 9 meters per second. The difference between the two is the work done because work's the change. All right, so I've got 1 half MVF squared minus 1 half MVI squared. So 1 half times the mass of the uh, cart, 1.5 kilograms, okay, times 9 squared, the final speed, minus the initial kinetic energy, 1 half times 1.5 times 3 squared. And when I do that, I should get 54 joules worth of work not outside the realm of possibility for a question like that to end up on a unit exam. Or maybe a derivation of that. Instead of at giving you the 9 meters per second, maybe I would say 54 joules of work is done. What's the final speed of the, of the cart? And you would have to work backwards, okay, the other way. Right? Essentially, the question is still kind of the same. Questions on that one? Okay, roller coaster. If you see the word roller coaster, what kind of question is it? Yeah, it's a conservation of mechanical energy question. It's, that's the prime example for that. Be on the lookout for that. A cart rolling down a hill would also be a law of conservation of energy type question. All right, so it's the top of a 35 meter hill. So they told me what the initial height was, okay, and traveling at an unknown speed. So I have no idea what VI is, but they do tell me the speed and the final height. So later in the ride, the final height is 12 and the final speed is 21.8. With those two numbers, I can calculate the mechanical energy. Well, I can't really, but okay. I can get far enough that I could locate and solve for what the initial velocity is. So the first thing I got to understand is the mechanical energy here and here are what? The same. Okay, at any two points because there's no work being done in this question, right? Nobody's pushing the roller coaster. Nobody's trying to slow the roller coaster down. It's just flying. Okay, so we got EI equals EF, which means the initial potential plus the initial kinetic, and what I'm looking for is part of that. Okay, equals final potential plus final kinetic. All right, so I can plug in all my formulas. I wasn't given M in the first place, so I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, everybody with me there? Since I wasn't given it, and it's in every term, it'll cancel. And I need to solve for VI. So the first thing I need to do then is subtract this over to this side. All right, so I subtract GHI over to here. Then I divide by 1 half and take the square root. And so that's what we see here. VI equals the square root of G times the final height times 1 half of VF squared minus GHI. Right, Kennedy? Put it away. Okay, now, plugging in my numbers here, 9.81 times 12 plus 1 half times 21.8 squared minus 9.81 times 35 over 2, or over 1 half square rooted, the initial velocity was 4.9 meters per second. Expect one like that on your unit exam, okay? That was a unit exam qu question last semester, All right? So expect, that's the level of difficulty you should be able to solve yourself. All right. Now, do you have a whole bunch of these solved for you that you can watch as many times as you need to? Use that. Okay. This weekend, guys, if there are problems that you do not know how to solve, you'd best be watching them get solved on the podcast. It's your best tool for preparing for this exam on Monday. Caroline.
maybe a multiple choice question where I would ask something that simplistic. Okay, most likely I'm not going to ask a question that is that easy. Okay, you have to use that indirectly in these kind of questions where you go, you know, where we're understanding that mechanical energy is EP plus EK. That's we just kind of did that uh, last week to kind of build up our skills. It was kind of our first step on the ladder. Okay, beyond that, we're probably not going to use it again. Okay. All right, questions on that one? Yep. All right, now I'm going to give you another one like this I want you guys to try. Okay, try this one, just like the one you just did. Okay. All right, guys, let's have a look at these ones. Okay, question number one. Keyword, work, yeah, so it's a work energy theorem question, same as it was in the last one. Okay. Except this time, instead of changing the kinetic energy, we're changing potential energy. How can we tell the difference? How do we know whether I should use m times g times h or mv squared? Right. If I'm looking for a change in speed, I've got to use kinetic energy. If I'm looking for a change in height, I've got to use potential energy. Right? That's the first thing you have to identify other than is it a work energy theorem question or not. Okay? Then you have to identify what kind of energy is changing. Okay? Second one is a bobsledder. Essentially the same as a roller coaster. Yes, it is. Okay, his energy, mechanical energy at the top, is equal to his mechanical energy at the bottom. Difference is how much is potential and how much is kinetic. All right. So for question number one here, okay, first off we said this is a work energy theorem question. Works a change in energy. In this case, it's a change in potential energy. E P minus E I. Okay. So m times g times the final height minus m times g times the initial height. So that's our uh, 35 meters, so 200 times 9.81 times 35 minus 200 times 9.81 times 10. Gives us okay, 49,050 joules worth of work to lift 200 kilograms, 25 meters, all right? which is a fair amount of energy. 200 kilograms is a lot of weight. Okay? It's over 400 pounds. Okay? To give you some idea, it would take a lot of trips for you probably to do that. Okay. All right. Questions on how that one works? Okay. Now, on a test, could I change that and say what's the final height of the of the 200 kilogram load? Sure, I could. Right. And then instead of, I would have to give you, of course, this number, right, the work done, or I give you a force and a distance or something like that. Okay. And you could work backwards to find the final or initial height, depending on what you asked for. Okay, Bob Sledder's making a run when he's 45 meters above the end of the track. He's moving at 12 meters per second. So essentially, we have a roller coaster track, except this time it's a bobsled track. Right? So we know the initial velocity. We know the initial height. What we're going to be asked to find is the final speed, final velocity of the of the bobsledder. Okay, knowing that his final height is 13 meters. So energy initial equals energy final. Okay, the thing I'm looking for is part of the final kinetic energy. So, plugging in all of my numbers here, or sorry, I can move EK over to this side. Okay, sorry, not move EK, sorry, move EPF over to this side, so I leave EKF by itself. Then I can plug in my numbers. Okay, did I give you the mass of the bobsledder? Did I have to? No. Okay, in this case, mass is in every term, so I can eliminate it, which is what's done here in this step. You can see all the m's crossed out. Okay, now we're trying to solve for vf, so I got to bring the half over to this side by dividing both sides by one half, and then I got a square root. Okay, to get vf normalized and by itself, then I plug in my numbers: 9.81 times the initial height, which was 45, plus one half times 12 squared. That's the initial kinetic energy minus the final potential energy: 9.81 times 13 over one half square rooted gives me that at the end he's moving at 27.8 meters per second. Okay, both of those were exam questions spring of last year. Okay, noticing a pattern here. Okay, do you have a better idea what to expect on Monday? All right, be ready, guys. I'm, I'm not trying to trick you here, okay? I want you guys to do well on this. That's why I'm showing you so many examples, especially old exam examples, right? You got to be ready. 
I would say on this exam be ready for one work energy theorem that is potential, one work energy theorem that is kinetic, and a law of conservation of energy problem. Expect those three things for sure in the written response section of the test. Okay. You'll get more details on that tomorrow, okay? because the lesson that was originally planned for today when it wasn't here is the unit exam review, which you'll get tomorrow. All right. Okay. Now, what else we got here? Okay. Um, so the question goes, I'm just going to cover up part of it here, if I can. And I can't because I don't have that tool on here right now. Okay, anyway. Okay, so we got the rock falling off the cliff. It's 20 meters off the ground. It's moving at 16 meters per second. The rock's 2.5 kilograms. Okay. Um, oh, no, sorry. That's way under what we're going to be doing here. Way under what we're going to be doing. Still way under what we're going to be doing. That's not a very good one either. Okay, try this one. You don't need any explanation here. Roller coaster. Four and a half meters per second at the top. 200 meters off the ground. It's the roller coaster from hell. Okay, and over on the other side, it's 50 meters off the ground. Figure out how fast it's going. All right, give that one a try. Okay, let's have a look at this one here. Same as always, okay, for any law of conservation of energy question, we start out with EI equals EF, okay? We're trying to find the final velocity, which is part of the final kinetic energy. So I'm going to skip a step here and go straight to this. MGHI plus one-half MVI squared equals MGHF minus one-half MVF squared, okay? There's no M. Even if there was an M, it doesn't matter because it cancels off. I'm trying to get VF by itself. So first thing I do is subtract, uh, sorry, subtract GHF over to this side. All right, so I have GHI plus one half VI squared minus GHF equals one half of VF squared. I want VF by itself, so I divide both sides by a half. Okay, then I take the square root, and I've got VF by itself. Do these all work the same way? Yeah, once you can solve one of these, you can solve any of them, because they're all the same. Okay, you don't have to do a whole lot of thinking about it. So, VF then is going to be the square root of 9.81 times 200, right, plus one half of 4.5 squared, okay, minus 9.81 times 50 over one half. Okay, and when we plug all that in, we should get 54.4 meters per second. Okay? Give you some idea how fast that is. That's 195.8 kilometers an hour. I don't know too many roller coasters that go that fast, but if you free fall 150 meters, you're going kind of fast after that, I would think. Okay, and imagine if that's how fast you're going over there at 50 meters, how fast you'd be going down here at zero. Very fast. Okay, this would probably be a roller coaster everyone would either black out on or be turned into a flesh colored jelly and on. Okay, the g forces at the bottom of this loop would probably be enough to squish and liquefy you. Yeah, don't ride that one, it's probably not good for you. Okay, um. All right, let's try this one here. Similar thing, okay? Different situation, but still a similar thing. This time, though, we're not being asked to solve for a velocity. We're being asked to solve for what? Height. We're being asked to solve for height on this one. So slightly different in the manipulation. The rest of it is pretty much the same. All right, give you a couple minutes on. All right, so on the ground, at ground level, how much potential energy does this thing have? Zero. All right. So we're looking at still an EI equals EF situation. It's just that initially we only have kinetic energy. Okay, and that's going to equal at the end where it's got both. Okay, they tell us it's still moving at 110 meters per second, but they're asking us how high above the ground it is, which is part of that term. So first, I should move EKF over to the other side. All right. So I'm going to have one half 
mvi squared minus one half mvf squared equals m times g times h f. All right. Did I give you the mass? Okay. So I didn't give you the mass. You don't need it, so it's not a big deal. Okay. We'll cancel it off, um, and then we'll solve for hf. So we'll divide both sides by g. Okay. And that's it. We're solving for hf now. So we plug in our numbers. All right. And um, okay, so I don't know where that number came from. We're solving for a height. I don't know why it'd be meters per second. Cross that off here. Okay, so our numbers plugged in here now are going to be uh, one half times the initial velocity, which was 495, 425, 420, 25 squared minus one half times 110 squared over 9.81. So 0.5 times. I came out to that number I erased, but it's not in meters per second, it's in meters because it's a height. All right, so 8,589 meters above the ground. So it's eight and a half kilometers above the ground level, which would be close to the top of most of the mountains we can see out the window on a clear day. All right, pretty high. Making sense? Okay, how many people are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with this stuff? Okay, good. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so in this one they tell us, okay, the efficiency of the ob of the thing is 35%, which means it's 0.35, okay? So the efficiency is 0.35 or 35%. What's the input energy required if a 2.00 times 10 to the 3, so essentially a 2,000 kilogram object, is lifted 5 meters? Can I figure out how much energy that would take? What do you think? Okay. I should be able to figure that out, right? Because I got mass and I've got height. So I can figure out what the potential energy would be at that height. Would that be equal to the work this thing would have to do? All right? Then I should be able to figure out at 35% efficiency how much energy I would actually have to put in to get the job done. All right? So that's the first step here is just figuring out the energy. So 2,000 okay, times 9.81 times 5. That will give me the effective work that's getting done, not the total work I've got to put in, only the output work. All right, so 2,000 times 9.81 okay, times 5 meters. All right, so there's my work that has to get done, but I only work at 35% efficiency. All right, so 98,100. Commas in the wrong spot. All right, that's the work I've got to get done. So efficiency, okay, equals the uh, um, output work, okay, divided by the input work. And I, I know I use different symbols every time I do this because just every time feels different to me. All right, so I want to find out how much work I've actually got to put into this thing. So that means I got to cross multiply these two numbers. Agreed? All right, so then I'm going to have the work that's got to go in is got to equal the work I'm going to get out divided by the efficiency. So that's going to be 98,100 joules divided by 0.35. Will that give me a number bigger than 98,100? Okay. And that makes sense, right? I would have to put in way more energy than that in order to get this done at 35% efficiency. Okay, so uh, divided by 0.35. Okay. And it gives us 280,285 joules. All right, so a lot of energy to get that work done. Does that make sense, Alex? Yeah. All right. Any other ones from the efficiency one you want to go over? All right. I want you to finish up those two sheets you've got. Okay. The work and energy and conservation of energy and that efficiency one. I want those done. Okay. There is some efficiency stuff on the unit exam. Not very much. Okay, the conservation of energy and work energy theorem stuff is the most important. If you have questions about any of those, this is your last chance to get them answered. All right. Well, maybe schedule help on Monday. That's really leaving it to the last minute. 
Okay? Not that I won't. I'll answer them. That's fine on Monday, but you're really leaving it for the last minute then. Alright, so let's get to work on that stuff there, guys.